Welcome, friends, family, and whoever just happens to be on here to another episode of Munchies and Minis, pre presented by the Gluttonous Geek. My name is Catherine Barsonistas. I run the nerdy and geeky food blog, The Gluttonous Geek. And Mun uh, Munchies and Minis is a weekly uh, web, well, I guess, streaming series where I first cook in D&D &D or well, Dungeons and Dragons or fantasy tabletop style uh, recipe, and then work on painting and miniature. Um, I've been doing the 52 weeks of D&D challenge since February, um, where there's a different challenge each word each week to then create some kind of fan art uh, deal, um, dealing with Dungeons and Dragons. This past week I dealt with a challenge word for uh, rat folk with uh, what I call rat king pasta fritters, so it's very cheesy fried pasta. This week, you're in luck, um, the challenge word is dragon. Um, I Originally, we wanted to do rock candy for this, but it's not very good for streaming, especially since you don't see the results immediately. Then I thought, cake pops, and then I went, I hate making cake pops. So, um, what I am making today are going to be what I'm calling chromatic, um, chromatic dragon eggs. They're going to be cheese balls that have flavors that are associated with about three of the chromatic dragons from Dungeons and Dragons. We're going to be dealing with uh, Red, um, red dragon, green dragon, and black dragon, uh, respectively fire, poison, and acid. Don't worry, I'm not actually going to poison you. You'll see what I'm about to do in a few minutes as I get everything prepared, which I realized I did not have everything quite prepared for this episode. So you're gonna be seeing me measure as well. It eats up time, whatever. So um, I should probably get to cooking then. So, um, Cheese balls are probably one of the easiest appetizers you can make because it's basically cheese with more cheese and then set and you might put some stuff in it. Um, I'm gonna be making three types, like I said. Um, first one is going to be a red dragon uh, cheese egg that's gonna be using smoked paprika and a gulshang sauce, which is a Korean spicy uh, like red pepper paste, um, as well as topped with some peanuts. Uh, for the green dragon egg, I'm going to be using ingredients that are considered, well, they're non-edible, their alternative forms are considered poisonous. Um, so we're going to be mixing, um, we're going to be making a sweet cheese ball with some honey and nutmegs. Nutmeg in big, or, uh, big quantities has, cy has basically toxic cyanide, even though I'm not going to be giving you that much to make it poisonous or anything. And I'm also going to be mixing that with some almonds and almonds extract. So that's going to be a nice sweet one. And I, that reminds me, I need to get my almond extract out of here. That's peppermint. That's lemon. I'm not using lemon. I need almond. Where's my almond? Haha. -ha. Almond. Okay. And, uh... And finally, for our black dragon egg, since they are acid breathers, we're going to be making a very lemony, garlicky uh, cheese ball covered in poppy seeds and, bla and toasted black, well, black sesame seeds. You'll see what um, I'm talking about in about a minute. So, um, that said, I imagine we probably should get started on making our cheese mix. So, um, what you want is about 12 ounces of cream cheese softened. And I need to find my skizzers. Skizzers, what are you? Skizzers? Okay, we got our scissors here. Because like I said, I did not have any time to do any prep whatsoever. Let's just go ahead and switch to our prep cam so you can see what I'm doing. Now, yes, cream cheese, whichever brand you want, you want to spend money on. And I realize I'm going at a million miles a minute, so I'm going to have me a glass of wine. She's got some nice cardboard Chianti here, because I am one crassy lady. And if you're wondering what the music is by, it is actually part of the streaming app, uh, Pretzel. I just got it today. Uh, it's the links for it may be dropping in the chat at some point um, during the show. I'll probably put a link onto the YouTube description. Mm. 
Okay. Yeah, I needed that. All right. So, since cream cheese does take a little while to soften, I'm just going to go ahead and put it into a mixing bowl to just kind of get that to soften up. If you're wondering how much 12 ounces are, I'm going to make it easy for you. A standard box of cream cheese is going to have about eight ounces in, in there. Yeah. So if we do our simple math, and I've got two packs here, I'm going to need about three quarters of it. So essentially a block and a half. So just going to empty that into there to let it warm up for a little while. Stay. I command you. Aha. All right. One, one block of cream cheese. Ah, ah, ah. And the nice thing about these packages too is that usually it'll have little measuring lines just like with, stick of, uh, with a stick of butter. So I'm going to need about half of this package to so about four ounces to add on to that. Just going to do that and mark it. Yeah, opening it this way. Whew. So yeah, middly, it was very hard to get up and go streaming uh, this afternoon because the heat has started up in my state and uh, the pollen has already been in. So that combined with the humidity and st storm coming in this, uh, this next weekend, old fogey me is just going, I don't wanna, I don't wanna move. I just wanna play, I just wanna play Fallout Vault Dweller or what's it called? Fallout Shelter like the next three hours, even though it's mostly just getting people with the same last name to dance and then make babies. It's like, you think Game of Thrones is uh, creepy? Try playing Fallout Shelter. The characters never age. Not only do they never age, they're making babies with like Characters that are like their grand, well, their grandchildren's age, and I'm just going, oh, this is so creepy. Why am I watching this? But then I realize it's kind of like playing any kind of uh, strategy game, like Civilization. My dad would spend hours on that. Okay, so just gonna let that sit, come to room temp while putting this away. So I don't need it. Da, 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 da. Next, simple part. You're gonna need some shredded cheese. Um, the cheese I'm going to be using is white cheddar. Feel free to use regular sharp cheddar. Um, the reason why I'm doing uh, white cheddar in this particular case and spent the more and spent more money for it is um, because of the green um, cheese ball. Well, the green dragon cheese ball I'm making is going to be using some matcha powder, and I want that green to show up well enough when um, you kind of slice into the cheese ball. Um, with cheddar, it's going to give you kind of a weird. Well, I mean, regular cheddar, I, I, actually this could be considered regular cheddar because um, most cheddar that you see in the stores is dyed to make it seem more cheddar-like, even though technically it starts out like this. I'm spending more money to have less stuff done to it. Go figure. Um, but you're probably going to get a stranger color with it, even the flavor is going to be the same. So uh, if you want this, to spend the extra money a little bit on the look, go for white cheddar. Uh, if not, I don't blame you. So um, yeah, you want about 12 ounces um, for these. A good thing to keep in mind for a cheese ball is that you want a half, like a one to one ratio uh, of cream cheese to whatever shredded cheese you're gonna use. So um, now that I've got that, I need to uh, get it into smaller little bits. Um, so what you're gonna need for that is a food processor 
and I realize that my stove cam is not actually plugged in. Or is it? No, it's plugged in. It's just being weird. What is going on with my stove cam? Are you plugged in? If not, I'm just gonna have to pull the, it's plugged in. That is so weird, okay. Technical issues aside, let's just go ahead and that is perfectly fine because in all honesty, I'm gonna be using this only once anyway, no? Here comes the fun part, trying to figure out how to plug it in with my outlet being all the way over here. Okay. Ah. Gonna make this work, dang it. <laughs> Unplug this, plug this in, ha ha. I have solved the food processor puzzle. All right, let's just switch up the cameras here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, for some reason, my stove cam decided to not work this afternoon while my cat is meowing in the background because he wants attention. Um, so, 12 ounces of shredded white cheddar cheese. You will open for me and you will like it. Eh. Yes, Moosey meows. You probably can't hear him, but he's freaking adorable. Okay, so, cheese, actually. Aha! I have solved the camera puzzle, kind of. All right. So yeah, just wanna chop this into itsy bitsy bits so it mixes well with our cream cheese. <laughs> All right. Okay. And let's see if this will let me show it off. Whee! And just kind of let it go. I mean, I hope that's not too loud for you guys. Um, but yeah, as you see, it's getting kind of to the texture of rather large breadcrumbs at the moment. I'm just gonna let it go just a wee bit longer. Okay. That looks good. Now, I know you could probably just buy blocks of cheese and use the grater attachment for this, but it just goes a lot faster if you use, if you just start out with shredded cheese. Also, there's usually just a little bit of starch in your in shredded cheese because they coat it with starch to keep it from sticking together. And therefore, it'll keep it from sticking together too badly as you're trying to mix this. So, okay, so I got my cream cheese and my camera back in the right spot. Thank goodness. And Now, if you have a certain preference at this point to add any kind of other seasonings, uh, feel free to do so um, in the uh, food processor with your shredded cheese. Um, the reason why I'm not for this particular recipe is that, uh, hmm, is that I'm making one of my, um, it's called cheese balls, a sweet one, so I don't really want to mix stuff like you know, garlic and fennel seed in that. Um, but I actually have another cheese ball recipe on my vlog, thegluttonsgeek.com, which I'm gonna pop into the chat. Uh, let's see here, do, 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 do. right there. You gonna post for me, maybe? Eh. Again, it's being weird. On um, thegluttonsgeek.com for uh, pizza skull, um, cheese balls inspired by 
comedy fantasy podcast, well, the comedy improv podcast, Hello from the Magic Tavern. So. All right. So, yeah, I'm just taking two spatulas here and just kind of mixing all of that together. Actually, I think my cream cheese might still be a little too stiff, so I'm just gonna set that to the side for now to let that soften just a wee bit more. In the meantime, I need to start prepping my other ingredients. So what I'm gonna need for some of these, I'm gonna just go ahead and start prepping the ingredients I need for my black dragon, dragon egg. So you got a lemon here, and you're gonna need five large cloves of garlic. So I'm just gonna grab the five largest ones that I can off of here. Let's see if I can turn my music up just a wee bit louder. So I know in the last stream it didn't really pick up nearly as much as I wanted it to. Yeah, I think that's better. Okay. Cool. Okay. So, where was I? Ah, yes. Making this bulb of garlic accessible. That's one, two, three. Like I said, I'm just going to grab the largest cloves that I can out of that, but that should do it. Let's shove the rest of this over here for now. Okay. All right. And I think that's all I need to slice up, so I don't mind using this cutting board for this. And all right. So quickest way of peeling a clove of garlic. Chef's knife. Garlic clove. Place it flat on there, hold it firmly, and smack it. You may have to do this multiple times. I'm about to do right there. Okay. And now that I've smacked it, I've broken the peel and a little bit of the garlic clove, but that's perfectly fine. There you go. And again. This one's being a little bit more resistant. By the way, if you like this recipe or any of the other recipes that I feature on Munchies and Minis on this channel, um, they are, I do have printable PDF uh, recipe cards available for all of my recipes. Um, you can either get this week's recipe only, well, until, I want to say, next episode um, on my Ko-Fi for a $2 donation, as well as um, get the recipe cards and playlist that I have on my blog this current week. Um, that is linked to my Ko-Fi, I'm just dropping into the chat. Uh, Ko-Fi.com slash the gluttonous geek. Or um, you can get access to all of my Munchies and Minis um, recipe cards and blog recipe cards, all that, if you join my Patreon community at, I want to say, the um, Kitchen Twitch level for Munchies and Minis and more food, please, if you want all of the recipe cards that I do. Uh, that is on my Patreon at patreon.com slash thegluttonousgeek. So, of course, if you just want to, if you're having a slow... Uh, period during this 
stream that you just kind of want to do a little bit of reading and check out any of the other recipes that I have, you can go directly to my blog at thegluttonousgeek.com. I just posted up the second of my Pokemon starter starters uh, this week. I'm kind of doing it sort of in a, uh, getting hyped up for Detective Pikachu coming out. I want to say, was it next week? Um, whatever. I mean, considering that I'm a 90s kid, I grew up with Pokemon, I'm super excited about what I've seen about the trailer so far because it feels like a giant love letter to all of us who watched the animated series or, you know, played the game on Game Boy when we were kids. Um, so yeah, uh, that recipe that I have um, this week was for a some deviled eggs inspired by Cyndaquil. The Johto starter fire po uh, Pokemon, or second gen. Um, yeah, I have basically done tea eggs with Lapsang Suchong tea. Lapsang Suchong is a Chinese smoked tea that quite honestly tastes like a barbecue. Um, I enjoy putting tons of sugar in it, but for this particular recipe, I am just soaking cracked eggs in it to let it kind of soak up all that smoky flavor. And then what I did was mix the yolk with that and, cur and curry cubes and um, topped it with some pickled red ginger. It is delightful. Uh, I do recommend, uh, do recommend it. Um, throw this up and see the week before that I did what I call first gen crostini. So kind of like little appetizers inspired by the first generation of starter Pokemon, i.e. Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle. And later this month, in next week I'm actually taking a break from Pokemon in honor of the game Okami to make some golden peach dumplings. And then I'll come back to Pokemon the following week with some Torchic jalapeno poppers. So um, stay tuned for that. Okay, so as you see, I'm mincing the garlic and trying to make it as much of it into a paste as possible by kind of pushing down on my knife. And th admit admittedly, this um, cutting board's a bit textured, but also what will help is adding a little bit of kosher salt to your board to help release the oils in the garlic. So. It'll also help tone down that kind of raw garlic flavor you tend to get when working with fresh gar with a uh, fresh or minced garlic. So, just kind of smashing that a little bit, then doing tiny little slices, making sure to watch my fingertips. Go back on there. wee bit of salt and get back to smashing this or rather pressing this into a paste Actually, I might end up using more garlic because I love garlic like ever see a recipe that calls for only like maybe one clove of garlic or like a teaspoon of garlic of minced garlic and I'm just going really wuss and most of the time that's just kind of translation for you know just dump a whole handful of it in yeah that was me when I um, was buying the big jars of minced garlic from Costco which I mean I still recommend but you know there's something therapeutic for me about slicing and smashing garlic. I mean, for one, I get to hit something.
and two, I get to hit something. Why are we still talking about this? No, um, it lets me practice my knife skills, quite honestly. So, and it's weird. I would rather clean up a cutting board than I would um, a garlic press. That's, I know, I'm, I'm really, really freaking weird. Okay, I have to be careful with that, because that actually put the blade up a little bit towards my hand, but I'm fine. I managed to stop it before that. Um, kind of want to hit it on the back end of the blade like this. Keep the edge of the blade away from you. So. And like I said earlier, just put some kosher salt on the board with your garlic. That'll help release the oils and sweeten it up some. Make it a little less intense of a t uh, flavor when you mix it into things and don't actually cook it, which in this case, we are not cooking it. We're just stick putting it right into the cheese balls. So another thing about when you work with whole garlic cloves, make sure that you slice them in half well, just make sure there's a stable surface before you start smashing them, because that can get bad. Okay. Out. Not terribly so, though. Wish it was more, actually. I said, feel entirely free to use a garlic press and then just kind of crush it into a paste. I'm just doing this because, well, honestly, it kind of takes up time since we've got about two hours and this recipe really doesn't take all that terribly long to do. You know, if I wasn't trying to demonstrate it, but I understand not everyone has garlic press, so. And also, you get to watch me hit stuff. Smash the garlic. Coom, coom, coom. So as far as fun stuff that happened during the week, um, 
I am so excited. I got my badge and room for Gen Con this year. And I'm also super excited because I'm actually in one of the hotels that's uh, connected to the venue by Skybridge. So that, doesn't, that means I don't have to walk 20 minutes back to my hotel in the middle of the night. Oh, it's fun, nice having new friends to help walk me back to my hotel, but I figure it's going to be a lot easier to hang out with people, have room parties and all that. Oh, with my own place, it's well, my own room that's uh, like right next to the convention and the bars and all that, so hey, I'm excited. Um, super excited to meet up with my friends over at uh, Dryad Tea and Zombie Orpheus and all them. Rob Nagi Bards, well, former Bards. Yeah, I mean, I see them during Dragon Con anyway every year, but, you know, it's... Gen Con's just a lot more chill to me. I mean... Don't get me wrong, Dragon Con is my big nerdy family reunion. Gen Con is my, uh... I don't know this con. I've only been going for one year, so I'm going to be exploring as much as possible. I can't say that so much about Dragon Con because, like I said, I've been going to Dragon Con for the past 15 years. I feel like I've seen, well, it is an advantage being able to go around as much as possible at Dragon Con because I know those hotels like you wouldn't believe. Um, I remember when Alton Brown actually came to Dragon Con, goodness, two years ago, and his panel. I mean, it was the first time he'd ever come to Dragon Con, so you can imagine the crowd for that would have been crazy to begin with. Um, but his panel was right before his autograph signing, and the autograph signing was downstairs in the Marriott. The Marriott is probably the crowded, most crowded hotel during um, Dragon Con. So you can imagine, if you don't really know your way around that area, it's uh, it's gonna be, take a while for you to get down there. So, but since I've been going for the past 15 years, um, my husband was so sweet to uh, wait in line at the autograph signing for me while I went to the panel, and then I just ran. Well, I didn't say ran. I I casually strolled downstairs while people were still trying to figure out how to get out of the room. So, oh, Gen Con. I mean, it was my only, it was my first year going uh, last year. Uh, by the way, I'm just, right now I'm separating peanuts because these are going to be the scales on my uh, Red Dragon cheese ball. Let's see. And I kind of want to have them be in halves rather than whole. Um, I probably have enough, but this is, you know, something I can do while talking at the same time as I wait for the cheese, uh, cream cheese to get a little softer. Um, but yeah, Gen Con, um, it was probably the first time I'd ever done tabletop at a convention. Because um, Dragon Con, there's, the uh, programming is so incredibly varied that um, it's kind of, you, you kind of be, are afraid to miss something. Especially since the costuming gets so crazy and amazing that you practically have flash mobs happening wherever you go. Uh, last year, uh, I remember Thursday night, there were a ton of people in T-Rex costumes. I think there were about 20 or 30 people in those inflatable T-Rex costumes. And they were all just like up, like up and down jump dancing um, in the um, lobby of the Hilton to Rock of the Dinosaur like you do. Um, I also had a group of guy friends, like just an entire ensemble of friends who dressed up as um, the Merry Men from Robin Hood Men in Tights. And yes, they were performing um, the song Men in Tights pretty much everywhere. So like I said, one giant flash mob. So... 
I just kind of give you an idea of what I'm doing since these are going to be, like I said, they're going to be scales on dragon eggs. The idea is that this dish can also be interchangeable with um, Game of Thrones, uh, the finale is coming up, you know, on May 19th. So if you need a dish to share with your friends for Game of Thrones, and, you know, they don't have too many nut allergies, um, or any nut allergies, uh, consider this recipe. Okay, so I did that. I need to zest my lemon. So, just grab a small grater here. And grab a bit of a larger prep dish to work with on this one. Okay. Let's see. Is mine louder than my music? Turn it down just a wee bit. Okay, that works for me. All right. So, you want the yellow part, not the white part. And the garlic ready to go for our acid dragon. Oh, black dragon. You get it. Now, as what to do with this lemon here? Well, um, you could put some lemon juice in your cheese ball, but why? Um, why? When you can just squish that up some. slice it up and have some lemon juice to make yourself a cocktail. So I'm just gonna put that to the side, make myself a cocktail while I'm waiting for um, the cheese balls to set. Let's see if this has gotten any softer here. A little bit, but not quite yet. So I'm going to, well, it's getting there. So I'm going to continue to prep and measure my other ingredients here. So, for my red dragon, I've got some, uh, I'm not sure if I pronounce this, I've kosheng, um, hot pepper paste. It's Korean um, red pepper paste that's kind of, kind of sweet and spicy. And I can't believe I'm defeated by, of all things, a food seal. Okay. go. Let's see, how much do I want to actually put in this? Right, a tablespoon of that. So once I find where I, heck, I put my tablespoons. That's a teaspoon. Tablespoons. Oh, this is what happens when you don't have time to do dishes before your stream. Okay, what is the conversion on a tablespoon that is that's right, it's three teaspoons. So I'm just gonna go ahead and measure three teaspoons. I'm making the stupid mistake of not having uh, sprayed this down with uh, cooking spray first. That's how you normally get stuff to not stick so easily to your prep dishes. God, this stuff that smells heavenly. Okay, so that's about a tablespoon of Gushang paste. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. And that's the mild stuff, mind you. Oh, bad. Consume at your own risk. Um,
Oh. Believe me, that, those are good noises. It actually tastes really good, but it does definitely pack a punch of heat to the back of your throat. Mm. Well, that's good. I know you wouldn't believe by listening to me, but it's good. Um, though now I'm going to have to figure out what to do with the rest of this tub. Oh no, I'm just going to have to cook things for myself. What do you think about that? All right. Okay, so that the stuff that's not going to get as messed up. I'm going to need, let's see here. Well, for one, I'm going to need a larger prep bowl. Here, or just another one. Okay. So measure out stuff for my covering for my what's it called? Black dragon. So this are going this is gonna be the scaly covering. It's gonna be a mix of poppy seeds because it goes well with lemon. And toasted sesame seeds. And yes, you can buy them with black sesame seeds at most um, Asian grocery stores. So, I need my measuring cups. Measuring cups. Got to have my measuring cups. Okay. So I'm gonna have a quarter of a cup of black sesame seeds. And to that, I'm going to mix, oh, I think about a half tablespoon of flax of uh, poppy seeds. So ha uh, since I don't have my tablespoons on me, that's about a t teaspoon and a half. So half, half, half. There you go. And that should be enough to cover our dragon egg entirely. This smells nice. Okay. Cool. Now, I also need to do is I've got my peanuts here. To that, I am going to add a teaspoon of smoked paprika. And if these are unsalted, uh, add a pinch of kosher salt. But since these are salted, I'm just gonna leave them out as they are because they're plenty salty as it is. So, just gonna give that a stir. Kinda coat it nicely. Also adds a little bit of color. And the nice thing about smoked paprika is it makes stuff taste like bacon without actually using bacon. Well, I mean, I it's not that I oppose bacon, but sometimes when you can't get bacon, if you run out of bacon, this, is ha this has better shelf life than bacon. So just think of it that way. Do not keep bacon on the shelf. All right, so got some nice smoky peanuts. God, that sounded wrong. Um, Gosheng paste. And now I need to measure out my other things from my green, uh, what's it called? Cheese ball. Yes. I know words, kind of. All right. So, right, I need half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. And even though I wrote down a tablespoon of matcha powder for this, it was rather expensive. It was more expensive than I anticipated. So I'm going to um, start us out with a half tablespoon of matcha powder once I can get this darn wrapper open. Come on. So 
the matcha powder is green tea powder, uh, essentially. So, just gonna, come on. Right. Can I open this? Oh, good. That was gonna be really annoying rather quickly. So let's go start out with about a half tablespoon of matcha powder there. Just gonna put that to the side for now. And a quarter teaspoon of almond extract in my other prep dish. So find that quarter teaspoon. Aha, here we are. And this stuff's pretty potent, you know, just like vanilla extract, it's, you're gonna taste some almonds. So, okay. So now that we've got all of our various mixings, uh, mixins and all that, well, no, one more thing I need to measure out and that is honey. So, two tablespoons of honey after a drink of wine. Mm. Okay. So since this stuff is sticky, I make things a lot easier on myself by spraying the inside of my prep dish and the inside of my measuring spoon to make this a lot easier to measure without sticking to the spoon. So. For this I need six teaspoons. Two, three, four, five, six. And I see that I blocked the camera, so you're just gonna have to take my word. That is about two tablespoons of honey. So I'm just gonna stick that with eh, not on myself. I'll stick that with my other mixins there. Eh, I'm just gonna put that to the side. Eh, stay. Because I told you to. Cool. All right. The nutmeg was over here. Put that back. Now, hopefully, by this point, our cheese mix should be melty enough to start working with. So, back to the double spatula. Okay, yeah, this is much easier to work with. In mixing all of this together until it is a uniform consistency. We just want a giant ball of paste, essentially. So that means pushing all these little cheddar cheese bits into the cream cheese and then folding it over. Didn't think you'd get a workout, did you? I completely forgot how much, uh, how much strength it takes to make one of these things. Granted, you guess you could use a mixer, but that's cheating. Besides, just leveling up your skills. Just, you get XP for making cheese balls, right? Right? I think so. Whew, goodness. Simple in concept, but yep. It takes a bit of arm strength. Okay. Maybe if I just do this to the music. Okay. <laughs> that is my 30, that's my uh, five seconds of shame. And then. Do as I tell you. 
and it's coming along, as you can see. It's actually starting to look a little bit like butter, to be honest with you. But no, it's cheese. It's all cheese. Okay. Whew. Looks like we're almost there. Still a little crumbly looking. Okay. I promise you this is actually the hardest part of the whole recipe. It's just having the like, patience to deal with the tedious part of mixing cream cheese with something. With not cream cheese. Um, now if you use um, orange cheddar cheese, it's going to be a little easier to tell whether or not it's mixed in. Mostly I'm just looking for consistency at this point, because as you can see, it's still a little crumbly around the edges. So I'm just gonna try to push that in. But ultimately, at the end, I want to cover the bottom of this bowl with an equal layer of my cheese mix here. So. I guess think of it a little bit like you're frosting the bottom of a cake pan. I don't know why you do that, like maybe leveling out cake batter. So, yeah, that's a pretty good analogy, I'd say. Okay. So. Okay. We're almost there. I promise. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is looking great. Okay. Ah, give myself carpal tunnel. <laughs> okay, that looks about even. So, good stuff. So, I've got an even layer of my cheese mix. So the next part, I'm going to need two, well, I'm going to need a mixing bowl, and I'm going to need plastic wrap. So, got that, and plastic wrap, I know you're right here. That's parchment paper. Where did my plastic wrap go? Here it is. Okay, plastic wrap. So. Now we're going to make the three different types of cheese balls. So, well, cheese eggs, dragon eggs, you get it. So, got my cheese mix here, and now I just need to divide it into thirds. Roughly, I mean, doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so, oh, <laughs> there we go. So, okay. It's gonna take a third here and lop that into my other mixing bowl, which you will see in a second, I promise. I'll put excess there and there. Put this to the side. And first, I'm gonna make up my sweet dragon egg, i.e. inspired by uh, green dragons from Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, where, as you know, that they are poison breathers. So, um, what I have to mix into this is two tablespoons of honey. Well, 
what kind of honey? Up to you. I've got clover in this particular round. Feel free to use like wildflower or orange blossom if you like. Plus, uh, currently this is about a half teaspoon of ground nutmeg and a tablespoon and a half of green matcha powder. So let's just see how that mixes up, whether or not I need more matcha or not. All oh, right, and my almond extract. That is about a quarter teaspoon. I might add a little bit more depending on how this tastes, it turns out. So yeah, using both spatulas, just gonna work that into my cheese. To make it a uniform consistency. And admittedly, the reason why I picked matcha was not just because it's green and makes it green, like, you know, a green dragon. It also is inherently bitter, which tends to be associated with uh, toxic substances. So it'll have that in the background, but with the honey, it still ultimately stays pretty sweet. So, yeah, as you can see, it's now at a almost fully mixed. There we go. It is mixed. So, now what I want to do is that I want to shape it. Oh, let me get that excess honey and matcha powder off. That's good. One second. Pardon me. The pollen is in my state right now. So, whew, right. So like I said, I, I have plastic wrap to help shape the cheese into an egg form that I'm gonna then scale with sliced almonds in a little bit as soon as it firms up. So um, the reason why I am doing the, uh, the green dragon egg first is since it does have a little bit of excess moisture from the honey, it's gonna take a little longer to firm up than my others. So, plastic wrap. Just need to find the edge of it for one. Come on! Do as I say! Where's the edge? Aha! Fooled you! Okay. So, nice big sheet of that. Just cut that up. I'm just gonna turn that out onto my plastic wrap. As much as possible. So, got that on my plastic wrap, and now I'm going to pull that up, wrap it up as much as possible, smooth it out, and then I just want to shape that into an egg form, molding it with the plastic, kind of tighten that up a bit, and then mold it an egg form like that so if it looks all ugly and wrinkled that is fine because I'm gonna be covering all up with sliced almonds anyway so you know, egg form make sure the flat the bottom is flat and that's gonna go into the fridge to firm up give it about 15 minutes to do so while I work on these other cheese balls. So, 
Looking at that bowl, I might actually need to work with a clean bowl or clean spatulas. So, yeah, let's do that. Mostly because I don't want the various flavors competing with each other at the moment. Cool. So, just get myself another mixing bowl. And another spatula. Here's hoping I have enough spatulas. I might not. I might have to clean one in the middle, but whatever. Um, I can do that. It's my show. All right, so next up, I think I am going to go ahead and make the black dragon egg. Um, well, like the inside for the black dragon egg, which is uh, black dragons are acid breathers, so um, I'm making this uh, lemon, lemony garlic. Um, See, drag a uh, cheese ball with a poppy seed and black sesame seed crust. So, um, since these flavors don't really conflict too much with my red dragon egg, I'm gonna just go ahead and make that first then. So, I've got our cheese. Just need to wall up another third. into this bowl and then take my mixings which are five cloves of garlic that I've smashed up uh, with um, a knife because I like to smash things with a knife feel free to use more if you'd like and a lemon's worth of zest go in the sink and now well, I just kind of smash and mix in all that into my cheddar and cream cheese mix I think this stuff's actually working a little bit better than the matcha did and if you're worried about salt content um, White cheddar is pretty salty as it is, so, I mean, you can taste it if you want, but you're probably not gonna need any extra salt. And if you're wondering about the green dragon egg and being sweeter, well, um, it actually, since I put honey in there, it will counteract the saltiness from the cheese. Balance it out rather nicely, I think. But yeah, I, I want this flavor to just permeate through this entire cheese ball. So I just need to mix it as much as possible to make sure to get those flavors in. Okay. That is looking good. Good stuff. All right, so now that I've got that mixed up, I'm just gonna get another round of cheap plastic wrap here. Not rounds, more of a rectangle. You know what I mean. All right, plastic wrap. And cheese. All right. So once again, just kind of wrap that up. And squeeze it. So you're able to smooth it out with your fingers. Of it right there, so 
the shape a little bit better. Okay, that is looking good. Definitely like an egg. So now I just need to refrigerate it to set it. And finally, it is time to make up our spicy one. I just realized I've got this bowl right here. I'm just going to use that instead. Prevent any cross contamination. Well, that wouldn't be tr the truth. It's still got some lemon and garlic in there. But like I said, those flavors tend to work well with this particular flavor combination. So. Let's see, get about half of that paste in. So I might actually be overestimating how much chili paste I need for this dish. So I'm just gonna taste that really quick to see if I need to add any more. No, I could definitely use some more. Mm. Woo! That kicks you in the face with feet, like back and throat feet. So, okay, let's do, I guess, that would be about a goodness. teaspoon, one and I guess three quarters of a teaspoon. I mean, it might just be me and my roommate's boyfriend who eat, uh, eats this. Um, we tend to like spicier food in this house. But... I'm gonna try that again. It needs it all. That full tablespoon. So I was right and wrong at the same time. Okay. All right. So put that in the sink to soak. up what's left of that chili paste into our cream cheese and cheddar mix. Good stuff. So now that is all mixed up 
it's time to wrap that one too. Again, wrapping that up and pushing our cream cheese mix together. Form it into an egg. I'm using um, pretzel for music, so it's gonna let me. I guess it'll drop in a second. Oh well. I tried. Still getting the app to work for me, so. Alright. So, yeah, just have to form that into an egg shape the best that I can. that into the fridge to let it set. Check on the other ones to see if they're setting up. Well, they're kind of setting up. But I did promise you that cocktail, didn't I? So, I'm going to try to make up a cocktail at the last minute with this lemon. What I'm going to make, I don't know. Things I say when I'm sober. So, first, just gonna do a wee bit of cleanup. Get myself a glass. Ginger. My little princess has decided to join me on my anti-fatigue mat and she won't let me pick her up. Another time maybe. Alright, so I've got that lemon and I've got plenty of fresh mint in the fridge left over from Thronesgiving. At least I hope it's still fresh at this point. It might be kind of questionable. We shall see. So, eh, we still have some fresh mint. Just gonna pick some of that out of this bunch here. Let's see, do I have gin? According to this bottle, um, Elixir de Juvence from Dr. Satan. Oh, there you go. So, just gonna throw 
throw some fresh mint in there. A lot of fresh mint in there. So I've got a lot of fresh mint. Might as well. I'm be picking it out of my teeth, aren't I? All right, I'm gonna just save a little bit here as a garnish. And the rest of this is actually gonna go into my stock bag because what I like to do with my kitchen scraps is put them all into a big freezer bag. And then, uh, switch cameras here. Um, then when the bag is full, which as you see, it's, it's getting, it's definitely at that point. I need to run it this weekend. I put it into a crock pot with a lot of water, cook it for about eight minutes, or not eight minutes, eight hours, and then strain it out. And I have about 10 to 12 cups of fresh made stock. So I am getting more of my money's worth. Okay, so we got that. See, where's my muddler? I have a muddler in here. I may not have always used it to muddle things, but like I tried to crush earth with it once. What were you thinking? Don't say. So, just going to uh, muddle that up. So I'm going to see what I'm doing because my music is in my way. Okay, so a little bit. A little bit of gin. Model that more into my gin. Add some more gin. And Absinthe. Or, you know, whatever anise flavored liquor you can find, like a rock, which I also have. And I need something a little sweet to counteract this. So, what do I have as far as mixers are concerned? Or syrups? Sure, I've got some kind of syrup in here. Oh, goodness. Ah, agave syrup. I do also have honey. I'm so stupid. All right, we'll use honey. So. Honey. And. I'm gonna add some ice to that and hope it doesn't splash all over the place, which thankfully it is not. And find my citrus juicer. Add some fresh squeezed lemon juice to that. Yeah. Because I'm a wuss. Well, I'll taste it first. Metal chopstick as a swizzle stick. Mmm. That is quite good. But it is a little citrusy, so I'm gonna 
just add a little bit of water. Tone it down just a wee bit. Definitely use a little more honey. with my uh, my kitchen scraps. I don't think the honey is completely stirred. So come on. Just, now I'm just splashing it all over the place. So watch me just get like a giant glob of honey as I take a sip later on towards the end of my drink. Oh well. Can't win all of them. Um, all right. Mm. Cheers. Okay. So I'm gonna just check on those cheese balls, see if they firmed up on me. Yes, I know that sounds dirty. All right. Still. Still a bit soft, so <sighs> well, I guess I can do a little bit of cleanup and then switch to the paint station for a little bit. So I'm kind of I'm loath to because then I'm not really sure you're gonna be able to see me putting scales on these things, but uh I miss. I guess I can just clean up while I'm talking uh, for now. Uh, yeah, the big thing, big tip about cooking, um, clean as you go. It will save yourself so much uh, frustration later on, especially when all you want to do is just sit down and enjoy your drink. Okay, that's not going to fit, but my mixing bowl will. So let's go ahead and clean those off. Um, but yeah, uh, as soon as those, uh, cheese eggs firm up, I'll be putting on scales onto them so they look like dragon eggs. And so it adds just a wee bit more flavor. Um, but as you know, it's a bit warm where in my state at the moment. So I'm half tempted to just put them in the freezer. I'm afraid the moisture might, uh, the ice crystals might form up in weird ways that will mess with the texture of the cheese balls. So that's why I'm a little loath to do that. Um, but yeah, um, so yeah, that, that's the idea I had for the 52 weeks of D&D Challenge Word Dragon. I will admit I'm a little worried about next week because the challenge word is profession. I haven't really quite figured out what to do with that yet. Um, part of me wants to do something smoked again because a lot of D&D um, &D players tend, if they do do a profession class, like a profession skill, they tend to go for like, you know, the obvious, like blacksmithing, carpentry, anything that would you know, make you sm uh, strong enough to swing around a sword. So I'm thinking, okay, what would the food associated with a common D&D &D class, like a D&D &D profession be? But, uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe something that can also, like if a blacksmith can cook on, on the hearth or have cooking on the hearth while he's hammering away a battle axe or something. I mean, that could be pretty fun. Um, so I guess then I'd probably want to do something that could be like kind of fire roasted. I mean, that might be an interesting episode. A campfire edition of Munchies and Minis, right? 
except trying to, you know, deal with weather. I don't think it's supposed to rain next week, but then I have to deal with bugs. But, uh, I mean, hey, I'm up for it. And the last time I did campfire cooking was actually the last season, Game of Thrones season finale, which was, I believe, season seven, or as we call it, Thronesmas. And at the time, I had um, gotten a, well, I guess kind of a sponsor request from Sam Club to review this cast iron skillet, which admittedly the cast iron skillet was kind of garbage. Um, but I decided I want to put my own twist on it by doing uh, recipes that you can cook on a campfire skillet to serve your adventuring party. And then are also thematically Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so I did about four different cast iron campfire recipes for that. And they turned out pretty good. Uh, uh, pretty nice. Plan. I'm an English major. I'm not even sure I got that particular gra uh, grammatical thing right. Um, but yeah, um, maybe I'll do something campfire. Maybe I'll do something smoked. We'll see. So... I mean, that makes sense, right? Just, you know, stick your dinner, like you got a long uh, list of items to make for the afternoon, might as well stick your dinner under a pot with lots of smoke. We'll be done in a few hours. The only trouble with that is, hmm, I can't have something that takes too long because this is only a two hour stream and I still need to paint things. I mean, heck, I don't think we're even going to be getting to the uh, mini for this month. I mean, we'll be finishing up last month's mini, which is Bosco the Party Dragon. Or at least try to finish up Bosco the Party Dragon. We'll see. Um, whew. Goodness. Mm. And I've got 30 minutes left of my stream. Let's see how those cheese eggs are doing. Okay, so it feels like the black dragon egg is firmed up nicely. So let's go ahead and start on that one. So first I just need to get my cat out of the way. Hi, princess. Ah, hello, how are you? This is Ginger. She's my 19-year-old calico princess. And she's a gorgeous little girl and I love her but she's also sitting on my anti-fatigue mat. Oh, honey, honey, honey. She's caught in my shirt. Baby, uh, 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 uh. you're okay, you're okay, you're okay. <sighs> okay, there we go, there we go. I'm sorry, little girl. She also got caught up in my microphone, so there's that, and now I'm covered in cat fur. And there's that, so, whew, hi, princess. Get that off of me quickly. I'll we'll switch to our prep cam here. So it's probably good that this one firmed up the fastest because coating it is going to be the messiest affair, and I don't really have to worry so much about uh... okay. So just unwrap that there, and then place it where I want it on my serving plate. There you go. So, now that we've done that, I just want to then coat it with my mix of, actually, it might just be easier if I do this. Nope, it is not easier if I do that. <laughs> Disregard what I just said about that. Okay, so just want to coat that with our mix of sesame and poppy seeds. Kind of 
to lightly press it into the surface so it sticks. As you see, this is a rather messy affair. <laughs> But since the cheese also kind of sticks to my plate, it makes it a little easier. Though it doesn't really do any favors to my countertop, admittedly. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Um, done covering that one. Actually, just kind of do what I did earlier with the bringing the bowl up. Kind of cover it. finished covering this one. Now that side's covered, I'm just kind of lightly pressing it into the cheese so it adheres and goes into it some. I imagine that working with this is kind of like working with glitter. Um, but, you know, edible. Um, okay, and just on that side. Now I just need to get that side. Okay. All right. Cool. I think that is about as coverage we're going to get, so I'm just going to hold on to that and discard the remainder of the seeds. And there you go. So I'm gonna keep that refrigerated until it is ready to, sh to serve or shoot. I'll let that firm up a little bit more. In the meantime, clean all this, clean all this off. Okay. take a look at those other cheese balls to see if they are ready to decorate. Yeah. Green one's just a little bit soft, but that's okay. Because I think it will be firm enough to work with. So, just gonna unwrap that one. Pull that out a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. All right. I think it'll work. Okay, so let's just arrange that. Now 
next to that one. Move it over slightly. Okay. Still a little soft. I could firm up a wee bit more. But since we're running out of time and I want to show you what I'm doing with these, I'm just going to go ahead and take that chance. So to kind of get the whole look that you would for, from um, Daenerys's dragon eggs, um, you would actually start at the bottom here. Just kind of adding sliced almonds to the bottom sort of a fan type pattern. And overlapping it. Actually. So we're gonna do the opposite. I'm totally wrong here. It's not going to look perfectly like Daenerys' eggs, but it will look scaled, and it will also stick properly. So, as you see, I'm kind of overlapping the almonds. That is the ones that don't break on me. So they look like scales. The recipe is going to instruct you to use about a half a cup of sliced almonds. You may not actually need this much, but considering that this stuff is pretty fragile, it kind of gives you more of a window to, like, a materials to work with in case some of those pieces break and don't really quite look how you want them to. Of course, it also depends on how close together you decide to make your scales.
fact, you know, I kind of like the look of this green sheets, so I'm actually going to make sort of a section where it shows, so it kind of be a little obvious that it's a green dragon. And admittedly, too, it's because I'm starting to run out of the longer pieces of almond to really get the whole look to make it be covered in scales, so... Let's see how that works out. I'm just going to press firmly, well, lightly, but firmly, into this to make sure that it sticks into the cheese. Okay, so that is my green dragon egg, and now it is time to bring out the red dragon. So, I'm going to make a little room for it on the plate. Gonna give me some room, baby. Okay. All right. Let's All right. Now for the spicy red dragon egg. Just put it down. Please work. Please work. Haha, <laughs> it worked. Okay. Mm. All right. Okay. So, now that I have my peanuts. I think I like the halves out a little bit more. It's a little bit more like scales. Well. This one might actually be better on the bottom up. So.
Now granted, as you can tell, this dish is something that takes patience to make. Unless, you know, if you really just want to cover it in nuts and go and just say, there you go. Sure, you can do that. But these are dragon eggs. And slaying a dragon not only takes strength, it takes patience. And you know, a lot of hit points couldn't hurt too. Maybe some potions. I mean, potion. that. Some chromatic dragon eggs. All right, so I've got literally, I've technically got 10 minutes left in the stream, and normally when I start painting, I am bloody exhausted, so let's just count the, um, the mini portion of this show as the fact that I kind of assembled sort of model dragon eggs. So, oh look, you got your munching and your mini in one, there you go. Um, however, we will start on our next mini, uh, next session. Um, I'll probably have a little less of a time intensive dish at that point, but um, yeah, uh, I think I'm debating whether or not to start on my Shambling Mound uh, mini or, oh goodness, I also have a Griffin. So um, it's about our, or should I do it quarterly? It's our third month, so it's technically the year quarter um, of the year. No, no, it's not. It's past that. Either way, I feel like painting something bigger uh, this particular month. So we'll be starting on that, I want to say, oh goodness, uh, next Wednesday when the 52 weeks of D&D Challenge Word is profession. Um, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of The Gluttonous Geek Presents Munchies and Minis. If you want to check out more geeky recipes by me, um, you can check out my blog at thegluttonousgeek.com, which I am dropping into the chat right now. Or at least it better drop into the chat. Yes, it did. Anyway, or if you want to follow me on Facebook, facebook.com slash thegluttonousgeek, um, or Twitter, I am gluttonous underscore geek. Um, if you would like the recipe card for today's recipe of Chromatic Dragon Eggs, uh, you can check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash thegluttonousgeek, where I have recipe cards as well as playlists associated with all of my blog recipes. Um, you can find them on Spotify. Well, they'll be for Spotify. You'll see on the Patreon page. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Um, it's been a real, uh, real treat, and I'm going to be noshing on these treats in just a few minutes. Um, after I take some photos. Um, 
I hope you have a wonderful night, and I'll see you next week. Thank you very much.